Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Will and in this particular video what I want to do is to sort of introduce a, a different kind of series. This is going to be looking at MIDI and C sharp and in this video I want to show you how to enumerate your uh, MIDI input and output devices so that you can select through all your connected uh, MIDI devices on your PC. So without much further ado, let's get straight into this. So uh, I have here an, uh, kind of, a, I want to call it an application because it's kind of a game but uh it's do forgive the very you know um i don't know how to say it basic graphics um it's just something i'm kind of messing around with as you can see though with that out of the way i have here a usb uno midi interface connected to my computer nothing really happens when i click the button but uh, it's under midi input devices and if i hit confirm I get another window, which actually gives me something slightly different. I have a USB Uno MIDI interface, as we saw um, similarly just now, but also this Microsoft GS Wa Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth. I'm going to kind of touch and explain a little bit on this one a little bit later in the video, uh, what this output device actually is. But um, uh, with that out of the way, what I want to do is to actually dive into the code and show you how you can uh, enumerate your MIDI devices connected to your computer. So let's just get straight into this video. Probably going to have to zoom in a little bit because I do appreciate, and uh, this is a different one. <laughs> Here we go. I should probably cross that out. I need it for reference. But anyway, so what you want to do in C Sharp, I'm using UWP as the front end framework. Um, and you probably want to follow along with this tutorial using UWP because some of the namespaces, I believe, are, are basically unique to UWP. Uh, WPF wouldn't have the same um, MIDI namespace that I'm using here. This Windows Devices .midi, you're gonna need these three. There's also a really helpful MSDN article on how to do this, and I basically followed the article through with this. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description, uh, and it's just as simple as following it through. It's really not too difficult, but I thought it would be quite fun to just make a run through of this, just in case um, people might like to look at a, you know a kind of more a more video displayed tutorial, I guess, and kind of giving it a little bit more context as well. As I said, this was kind of a game idea that I'm kind of fleshing out at the moment, kind of like a um, uh, using MIDI to create sounds and stuff like that. So the idea here is that you have a start screen, yeah, you have different screens, but in the main title screen, I have here a call to scan for MIDI devices, and I'm just going to hop to this method. And uh, here I have two local functions, scan for MIDI in, scan for MIDI out, and this is kind of where everything takes place. So we're going to go for scan for MIDI in. What you want to do is to set a string. Uh, I've called it MIDI input query string. And you want to assign it this MIDI import class. And you want to access this get device selector method. And then you want to call, construct this device information collection class. Once again, uh, I'll leave a full a link to the MSDN article with um, the tutorial source code that I followed for this. Um, but again, I'm just explaining it just in case maybe you run into some issues with it and you want to kind of know what's going on or explain how to set things up with a little bit of context. So what you want to do now, <coughs> excuse me, so what you want to do is um, this MIDI input devices, um, if it's, if there is no, if there aren't any MIDI input devices connected to your computer, you basically want to return some kind of like an error message is what I did. So I just pop up in a message dialog. Uh, that functions as an error message and just says no MIDI in device is connected, just tells the user and then it returns the function, nothing else really happens. Otherwise, if there are any MIDI input devices connected to your computer, then you want to fall through to this else statement whereby what we do, we instantiate, well in my case, and this is where you might want to deviate, but I did what I did is that I wanted to monitor on the screen some way to select the devices and so i decided to go for this content dialog um window and i put a stack panel if i can go to the um XAML, a stack panel with with four buttons and then i'm just updating the content of the buttons with the names of the devices uh in run at runtime and then you can then evaluate for the devices uh, once you hit the buttons if you want to just to kind of extrapolate on the idea Oops, I'm on the wrong class. Sorry about that. And so what what I did here 
is that I did a for each loop and I am basically um, doing a for each loop on this device information uh, class. Uh, oh, sorry, no, I did that wrong. So for each device information in the MIDI input devices object, which we created here, which is an instantiation of the device information collection, which is a collection of all the MIDI input um, devices. If I'm not mistaken, what we want to do is to add all the names of the devices into this collection. And um, what this collection is here is I actually created a list. Uh, I'll just hop to it. So uh, it's called MIDI device name. Let me just go straight to it. It's a list of string. And this list of string, as I said, is called MIDI device name, and it holds all the names of the MIDI input devices, and subsequently the output devices as well. I think I used the same list. Because what you do have is um, there's a distinction between output and input MIDI devices. So anyway, you want to store the names. So this is just one way you can do it. There's probably a couple of different ways you can, but here I'm accessing them by name. <coughs> and then I display my... Um, Yes, then I display the names of the MIDI devices onto the screen. So if I go to this function, I just basically have here a for loop, and I'm incrementing through the buttons. Now, this is not the probably the most robust way to do this. I'm incrementing through the list of buttons. Um, there's four in the list, which I added to this list here, UI MIDI name buttons, which are references to the UI control buttons in the XAML. And I'm basically just updating the content. So it's just a kind of a, a very simple way um, that sacrifices a little bit of robustability because what if I have more than four devices? Well, then I'm going to have to dynamically create buttons. But just for the sake of time, I just set it to four because I know I won't have more than four on my own PC right now. So uh, I update the content of the button with the device name and then that's about it. And then the function basically returns. Now, this bit is a little bit interesting. Um, because I wanted to evaluate for Im MIDI input and output devices, this is where uh, I needed a little bit of logic in place and just for a bit of validation. So I opted, maybe not the best way, a little bit risky, but I used a while loop. And while true, if the MIDI dialog uh, content dialog, which is my content dialog class for this particular um, XAML here, if I just go back, I have a member of that class, which is a Boolean, and it acts as a flag to, to basically say, okay, the user has selected, has confirmed the selection for the MIDI input device, i.e. they've selected um, confirm. So if I just go back to the XAML, it's basically if they click this button here, the confirm button, then there's a Boolean I have in logic that will be switched to true. So once that's true, or back confirm, so the same thing for the, but for the back button, then I actually call this scan for MIDI out, and then I break. So scan for MIDI out is a, is a very uh, similar kind of logic as MIDI in. It's kind of code duplication. I do appreciate that. So it's not really the best, because there's only a few discrepancies, i.e. calling MIDI output devices rather than MIDI input. Again, it's something for the sake of time that I've just left as it is. Um, haven't really optimized that aspect of it. But um, yeah, I had to do it like this only because you can't have more than one content dialog um, calling show async at the, sa at the same time. Uh, my mistake before was thinking that if I show one, uh, an, if I await a content dialog, then it will automatically um, hold the other content dialog, which I have it for the MIDI out. But I just had to be careful because they were trying to, the program was trying to display two content dialog windows and then I got basically an unhandled exception. So um, what I opted to do was that my MIDI output content dialog window won't display until I've selected something or gone back on the um, MIDI in content dialog window, hence why I've got this while loop logic. And if all that has been done correctly, then what you'll find is that your computer, the program rather, will enumerate your MIDI devices that are connected to your computer. Now, I'm going to go straight to MSDM for a second because uh, there was something I wanted to touch upon, and that's the um, the Microsoft synth. I'm not sure if I can find a little remark about it, uh, but basically, ah, here we go. 
So I'll just read it out a little bit. When you enumerate output MIDI devices using the technique described above, your app will discover a MIDI device called Microsoft GS Wave Table Synth. This is a built-in general MIDI synthesizer that you can play from your app. So what this basically means is that you can um, use MIDI to basically control what seems to be some kind of synthesizer, um, which is, you know, um, provided by Microsoft. So that's quite handy because you don't have to go through the trouble of getting a third-party synth off the bat. This one may be kind of basic. I'm not too sure. I think I've used it before in the past, maybe in some other applications, but it's good to have one off the bat anyway. So um, that's what that second, that that's what you were seeing when I was enumerating my output devices. So uh, that's all I wanted to really do for this part of the tutorial. Uh, just a quick look at how to enumerate MIDI devices connected to a computer via C Sharp, in this case, UWP. And uh, as I'm developing this kind of application, uh, I may be making some more tutorials um, with some more uh, in-depth functionalities regarding MIDI and C Sharp. So I hope you enjoy this video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.